Well, the next item in the list is exactly what I said in the end of the previous video. Um, just making sure we understand the complement of, event, of an event. If there's a 10% probability of rain at midnight, then there is a blank probability that it won't rain at midnight. Well, if it's 10% that it will rain, it's going to be 1 minus 10%, which I'll write, I'll use percentages, 100% minus 10%, which is 90%. That is the answer. And you could write it as a decimal as 0.9 or 0 0.90 if you prefer. 90%. Number six, the probability that a certain car part is defective is 7%. So what is the probability that the part is not defective? Well, using percents, I would put 100% minus 7%, which would give me 93%. So 93% probability that that car part is not defective, or in other words, it's good. <clears throat> Number seven, now we're going to have to think a little bit about this one. A company employs six women and five men. I'm going to just draw a little picture up here. This is the entire company, uh, people employed by this company. I'm going to put six W's and five M. Just to remind myself that this is the people employed by the company. If four employees are selected at random, <clears throat> four out of these 11, what's the probability that at least one is a woman? Okay, so, um, the, the, we need a numerator and a denominator, right? But we're looking for the probability of at least one woman, which means one or more women, which is equal to the probability of one woman, exactly one woman, plus the probability of two women, plus the probability of three women, plus the probability of four women. So we need to add up all four of those numbers, or we can take a little shortcut, use our brains here, and use the complement of an event. If there is not at least one woman, what does that mean? What is the complement of that event, at least one woman? Which for this, since we're choosing um, four, that means at least one woman means there's either one, two, three, or four. The complement of that would mean how many women? Zero. So we can say that this is equal to one minus the probability of zero women, which means one minus the probability of, um, if you want to be more specific, zero women and four men. <clears throat> so, another way of saying that would simply be 1 minus the probability of 4 men. So, all we need to do is figure out the probability of getting all 4 men and we're done. And that is quite easy. It means exactly 4 men. Let's notice over here. I'll write it over here. The probability of, I could write all 4 men. I'll just write 4 men. Is going to be the number of different ways you can choose four men on top over the total number of ways you could choose from this entire group as the denominator. Remember, if, we're, uh, if four employees are selected at random, the denominator needs to be the total number of possible outcomes. How many ways can we choose four people out of this group? out of 11. Well, it's very simple. 11 choose 4. That's the total number of different ways. The numerator is the number of ways that are po uh, uh, favorable to what we're looking at. How many ways, this is what I want, is the number of ways you could get 4 men. 
Well, let's look at the group. How many ways could I choose four men? There are five total men, and I want to choose four of them. Combination, five, choose four. As simple as that. That is exactly the answer. Now, it's not simplified. We need to do a little bit of work, but I will leave it up to you to remember, remind yourself by plugging into the formula. Remember the combination formula. I'll say n choose k, that's n factorial over n minus k factorial, k factorial. If you, and in this case, n would be 5 and k would be 4. And another way of remembering this one in particular is if you're choosing 4 out of 5, you're leaving 1 each time. And if, so in other words, the combination of you know, 5 choose 4 is the same as 5 choose 1. So if you plug it in or not, you'll see that you get 5. Okay, and the denominator is going to be 11 factorial over 7 factorial 4 factorial. The 7 comes from, from 11 minus 4, n minus k. And we all remember that a number divided by a fraction is the same as that number times the reciprocal of that fraction. So 7 factorial, 4 factorial over 11 factorial. <clears throat> All right, so let's keep simplifying this. I'm going to go to the right. 5 is just 5 over 1. All I'm going to do on this one, so it's 5 times 4 factorial. I took the 5 there, I took the 4 factorial there. I'm going to cancel that 7 factorial with the 11 factorial in the bottom. 7 factorial is 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 multiplied. 11 factorial is 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So on the bottom I would keep 11, 10, 9, 8. And the 7 factorial, 7 down to 1 cancels with this 7 factorial. And let's see, let's do a little canceling. Let me write out that, by the way, 5 times 4 factorial is 5 factorial. That doesn't help us, but I'm going to write 5 times 4 times 3 times 2. You can leave off the times 1. 4, 3, 2 is 4 factorial. Over 11 times 10 times 9 times 8. All right, well, I'm going to take the 4 times 2 and cancel it with the 8. You don't have to do it that way if you don't want to. We can cancel different ways, and we'll get exactly the same answer. 2 times 4 is 8, so I canceled it with the 8 in the denominator. 3 over 9 leaves me a 3 in the denominator. <clears throat> and then the 5 over 10 leaves me a 2 in the denominator. So we get a 1 on top. And we get 11 times 2 times 3, which is 11 times 6, which is 66. Okay, so that's telling us. That's pretty unlikely. Basically, 1 out of 60 times on average, that's the probability, <clears throat> 1 out of 66 times, if you randomly choose 4 employees out of this group, 1 out of 66 times, um, oh, actually, I'm not, I'm not done, am I? That's the probability um, let me complete that sentence. One out of 60 times, 66 times, it will be all four men. It's going to be unlikely. Notice there are slightly more women than men. So the prob and you're choosing four. So the probability that all four are going to come from this part is unlikely. One out of 66. So here is what we are looking for. One minus that probability, which would be 65 out of 66 <clears throat> because it's 1 minus this number. 1 you could write as 66 over 66 to get a common denominator. So 66 over 66 minus 1 over 66 gives you 65 over 66. So very, very likely 65 over 66 chance, probability, that when you select four people out of this group, you're going to get at least one woman, which means, again, either exactly one woman or exactly two or exactly three or exactly four out of the four people being chosen. So the only way that fails is if you get all four men, and that probability is a very small probability. 
1 over 66. So this is the answer that we were looking for. 65 over 66. <clears throat> All right, number eight, I think is something we've already done before, but let's go ahead and do it again. Given the events E and F, draw Venn diagrams to represent this. Actually, this is two different things, but I'll put it in one Venn diagram. We're going to represent the set E and E complement, and then I'll draw another Venn diagram for this and this. So we're going to draw a total of three Venn diagrams. So the first one, very simple. This would be the entire sample space or universal set if you want to think of it that way. <clears throat> so I'm only going to need one circle. That's it. That's the set E. Everything outside of the circle is E complement. So I'll shade in E complement. That's E complement, and inside the circle would be the set E. So it, it's easy to see in this picture. Um, you could think of it as if I randomly threw a dart at this board. With 100% certainty, you either end up in E or E complement, because that takes, makes up the whole board, whole rectangular dartboard. And it's impossible to end up in both of them at the same time. We don't, you know, we don't consider this the, the edge here of the circle to be a, um, a, a possibility. Okay, so you're either in the circle or you're outside of the circle. All right, so the next one will be E intersect F. So in this case, we need two circles, and they don't have to be circles, ovals. You could use squares or triangles if you wanted to. That's the sample space. This circle is E. This circle is F. The intersection <clears throat> is this region here. So I'll just draw an arrow into that. The football region, the overlap is the, oh, sorry, I wrote union. I'm supposed to write E intersection F. <clears throat> and then for the third one, two circles overlapping. One of them's E, one of the circles is F. The union is everything that's inside either one or both. Here's both, but you only have to be in either one. So you could be this, this, or this as well. It's the entire figure eight. So just remember that E or F, when you have two sets overlapping like this, the union of them is everything inside the figure eight. <clears throat> 